some basics about an IT service desk are that it is uh, specified by ITIL, and it's a single point of contact for your customers, one-stop shopping, as we like to say. It's a, it's a function. It's not one of the processes. Most of you know that ITIL has a number of processes involved. Uh, there's like, depending on who's counting, there's like 20, 22 processes. But the service desk is a function. It really handles two main processes, those being incident management and request fulfillment. Uh, request fulfillment, a lot of us know that by another term. We call it service request. So incidents being that something's broken and needs to be uh, fixed, you know, fixed in some way, or a service request, meaning that somebody wants to uh, order something they don't have, whether it's a piece of hardware, software, or access to, to a system. So incidents and service requests are, are the two main processes that we handle at a, at a service desk being the, and of course, like I said, it's the single point of contact for your IT customers out there. A lot of these requests that come in, whether they're uh, requests for, you know, fix something or something new, uh, they come in in different ways. Some of you have call centers, and so your primary method is these call, you know, the uh, requests are coming in by phone. Some of you, uh, primary method may be email, or that may be the only method is email. And then some of you have what's generally known in the industry as self-service. So you have a website, they go to the website and they can uh, put in those requests and monitor. The, the advantage of self-service is that the person can stay abreast of what's going on without having to pick up the phone and call and say, oh, what, what happened to that ticket I put in three weeks ago? And then um, some other, other ways, you, uh, some people actually have walk-up centers or maybe they know where your cube's at and they come by and, and you get walk-up or as I like to call them, drive-by requests. And then, uh, you know, it's, the, it's a new world. And so we, we now have Twitter, Facebook, and other ways that people can stay connected. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind about a service desk is since it is a single point of contact, a lot of times all the communication about those requests are handled by the service desk team. So really respons responsibility of customer communication a lot of times is handled by the service desk. All right, there's a lot more about a service desk, and I think you know most of those things, but I just want to make sure that you understood some of the very basics about a service desk. So since we're talking about simplification, we're going to use a term I like to use a lot, KISS. Now I've cleaned it up, uh, keep it simple, silly. But um, we do want to find out what are some of the things that we'll get out of simplifying. Why simplify? You know, what is that going to do for me? Well, if you simplify what you're doing with the service desk, some of the improvements that you want to see include how, maybe how long it takes to fill out a ticket. And I'll just call them tickets generically, by the way. So, um, you know, we want to reduce time that it takes to fill out a ticket. We also, though, want to make sure what we fill out, those tickets, are accurate and contain the appropriate amount of information. Just because we want to simplify doesn't mean we need to go skimpy and we leave out a lot of things that we really, really need to capture. So we, we want to make sure. Uh, so one of the things in simplifying, since you're not filling out unneeded information you're simplifying, it's more likely that the information you are capturing is going to be more accurate. Another thing that we want to improve on is how long it takes us to respond, our response time. So these requests come in and, uh, you know, it's disconcerting to the customer if it takes us, uh, you know, two or three days to even respond that we even have a ticket in the system. So we want to improve the response time. And of course, the, uh, the resolution time, so the close time. So how long it takes us to resolve a, an incident or close a service request is very germane to the customer. They want these things done, of course, yesterday. So we want to see what we can do to improve those response and resolution and close times. All that leads to the last bullet, which is really customer satisfaction. We, we want to, you know, even one dissatisfied customer can uh, go kind of spread the word and, and, and leave a bad taste in, in the business's mouth about IT. You know, that service desk, they, they couldn't do anything to help me. And this, I had this issue that went on for six weeks or it took me, you know, it took me three weeks to, to get an iPad that I ordered or, you know, who knows. 
So you want to really reduce um, that those customer complaints, and so we really want to uh, increase customer satisfaction. And so these are some of the main things that we seek to improve by simplifying some of the processes. Now I've got simply five uh, items that we're going to talk about to, in keeping with our simplification here. So the first is something that we all do and we know about, and that's categorization. We, we all categorize those tickets in our service desk, right? And so there's – because we're IT, and, it's, and a lot of times these have been designed and developed by you, the IT folks, we tend to be very technical in nature about how to categorize things. And what happens is we kind of explode categorization into every possible scenario we could ever have. Unfortunately, that is the, uh, the complete opposite of what we're trying to do in, in uh, simplifying. In simplifying, we really want to have just what we really need to capture. So w one way to look at it is uh, why are we doing categorization at all? Well, there's two main reasons we do categorization. One is to help us assign the, the tickets to the right individual or the right teams. Another is we want to do reporting. We w at the end of the, uh, the d day, the week, the month, we want to know how many of these type of tickets do we have versus those type of tickets. Of course, why do you want to do reporting? Well, reporting is a management tool, so it allows ma managers to see, oh, I see we had a lot of problems with uh, this type of hardware. We need to look and see what we can do to improve th this hardware or this software. Oh, I see that a certain department has entered a lot of tickets on this specific application. We need to provide training for those. So these are, are mechanisms for management to uh, basically to decide where they want to spend their resources. Resources, of course, being people and money. So that's why we do reporting, and reporting being one of the two main reasons we do categorization. All right, so how do we simplify? Well, one is rather than just have one huge list of categories that people choose or several levels of categories, it, it helps to simplify by breaking our categorization up into two different classes, those uh, ways that the customer can classify things versus ways that the agent can classify things. And most of you that work in the service desk scenario know the customer can't classif classify things or categorize things properly. Uh, they, they'll they take guesses, and, and, uh, and, and it's like – and here's an example I give. I, I've been in IT for, as you saw, 34 years, and if I have a problem on my, my laptop computer, you know, and it's – do I know for sure that it's a hardware problem versus a software problem? Did, did the software just go, uh, you know, lock up, or, or was it my hardware overheating? I don't know, and I've been in IT for 34 years. How, are we, how do we expect our – our customers to be able to properly categorize things up front. We can't even classify things properly up front until we've done some research maybe uh, and, and dug into the problem and maybe found out it wasn't the symptom that it thought it was. So that leads us to customers should not be really categorizing things, but they should be have a list of symptoms. And so they can categorize incidents by saying, oh, here, here's a symptom. Yes, this is the symptom I have, and they can choose the symptoms. So what you have really is the customers helping you uh, with a list, picking from a simplified list of categoriz categorizations, which are basically symptoms that allows us to uh, assign this to the right team, where on the other side, agents on an incident can wait until the end and categorize it properly for reporting because it's garbage in, garbage out. What you want is these tickets categorized uh, uh, accurately. So accurate is more important than, than expedience when it comes to categorization for the agents. For the customers, a, a, a speedy categorization, which, like I said, they're not really categorizing it. They're really picking symptoms, helps us um, bypass triage and go straight to assignments. Another thing we can do to, to uh, simplify categorization is to uh, limit what we put in there, and I've already kind of mentioned this, limit our, our, our selections to just what we need to capture for reporting. 
So what are our reporting requirements? Now, I walk into uh, accounts every day, and I'll look at their categorization. And, you know, they'll typically have three, maybe four, sometimes five levels. Uh, they'll start, at, is it hardware, is it software, is it networking, is it telecom? And then you'll go through and you'll, you'll say, well, it's hardware. Well, it's a laptop. Well, it's, uh, it's a, uh, let's say it's a desktop. And, it is, and then the next selection, is it a keyboard, is it a mouse, is it a hard drive? Well, I would say, who cares? How many times has a manager said, said, quick, I need a report of how many broken mice we had last month? <laughs> that, that never happened. So what might be more important is, hey, I need a report of, of how many uh, Dell laptops uh, problems we had versus, uh, I don't know, HP laptops because we're getting ready to renegotiate our contract and we need to know uh, who's, who has the uh, more problems with you know, that brand. So maybe the brand is something that we might need to capture in our categorization, not so much uh, down to the level of keyboard and mice and hard drives. I've even seen it where, and maybe you have too, where it says it's a hard drive problem. Well, is it making a worrying noise? I mean, who cares? We don't want to run, run a report on that. If those th if they're not reportable, then let somebody just put that into to the description to help us, uh, the agent, know what the symptoms are, but that's a symptom that's not a, cat that's not a reporting category. All right, another thing you can do is, uh, of course, limit the number of le levels. And when a levels is like that you pick hardware, and then out of hardware you pick is, is it a desktop hardware versus an enterprise hardware and, and so forth. So if you can limit this to, you know, two levels versus five, you're going to save a lot of time. Also, not only the number of levels, but the number of selections. There are some rules of thumb about the number of selections that you have. I like to see a list of selections. Of course, these selections are dependent upon the previous selection, but I like to see selection lists that are six or less. Anytime you're expecting somebody to read through the list in order to determine which one to pick, in other words, they have to read each and every one, they'll read six items, you get beyond six, you get seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, or even twelve. The closer you get to twelve, the, the higher the risk is that they're not going to read them all and they're going to pick the one that comes closest. And as you know, it's garbage in, garbage out. So this may lead you down the wrong path or if we're doing reporting, it's going to be reported on incorrectly. So rule of thumb is to try to keep your selection list to six or less, but no more than twelve. And again, as you get into that gray area of 7 through 12, you run the risk of people not reading them all. Now, there are exceptions to this rule of thumb, and an exception is if somebody knows exactly what they're looking for. So if they're looking for an SAP module or an Oracle eBusiness Suite module, and they know what that module name is or what that application is, they can look through a list of 50 that's in alphabetical order and find it. So that's an exception. It's okay to have a list of machine names or you know server names or or applications that are longer than than 12 but be careful if you're expecting somebody to read each and every selection so keep your selections short again avoid the technical um, technician problem of trying to make sure e each and every scenario is accounted for in your categorization there's just no need to do that uh, and, and there's another thing we could talk about, and that's the use of of, uh, of other. Should you use other? I'm okay using other, but uh, there's a lot of guidelines around that, and and I could probably do a whole other uh, e class <laughs> on categorization, and we could talk about other in depth. Uh, keep go moving on here. We have uh, limit service request to one item per request. Now, I know you're going to say, Brian, I, we can't do that. We've got new hires, and they need 15 different things. Well, that leads to the last bullet, and that's what I call an ITHR request 